we give a lot of breaks, it seems, to get new businesses here, and I think that's great. We've got to have jobs and all that, but also we need to focus on our senior citizens, too. Let's don't forget them. They've already been there, and they helped us get this far. Let's don't forget them. The great desire of all senior citizens seems to be that they can live out their life in their own home or a setting of their choice. What can you do to reassure your older citizens uh, that they have a right to feel secure in their old age. Hello, I'm Jim Kimbrough, State President of AARP Kentucky. On behalf of the 460,000 AARP members in the Commonwealth, I want to thank you for watching this video and for participating in the election process this year. In 2011, Kentucky will elect its constitutional officers, including a governor. We'd like to thank the candidates for governor who will be appearing on this video. They'll be answering questions that AARP has prepared and that are of concern to AARP members, their families, their friends throughout the Commonwealth, such as the Medicaid program, home and community-based programs, the delivery of meals to people who aren't able to get out and aren't able to provide food for themselves, transportation to vital events such as visits to doctors and clinics. Please use the information that you hear. Please share this video and the information in it with your friends, your families, with people within your faith community, within civic groups. AARP would like this as widely uh, disseminated as possible. All of these are issues that we believe are important, need to be discussed, need to be part of the evaluation that you will do before you go into the voting booth on November the 8th. Governor, what steps would you take to ensure that Kentucky residents have choices to remain in their homes and communities as they age? Do you support or oppose making the long-term care system in Kentucky more responsive to the needs and preferences of Kentucky residents? To me, it's very important that our seniors have as many options and as many choices about where they're going to spend those senior years as possible. That's why even during this historic economic recession that we've gone through and are still going through in Kentucky, we have nevertheless pushed in various ways to make sure those options are available. Uh, the Money Follows the Person grant, the Michelle P. waiver, the uh, Supports for Community Living waiver, all of those have been efforts on our part as an administration to make sure those options are there for our seniors and we're going to be working during the next four years to make sure that those are there and that we can expand them if possible. What steps would you take to ensure that Kentucky residents have choices to remain in their homes and communities as they age? Do you support or oppose making long-term care system in Kentucky more responsive to the needs and preferences of Kentucky residents? Well, if you don't mind, I'll get a little personal about my experience in this issue. My late father uh, suffered a severe stroke, and I, I was fortunate enough to be with him and get him immediate care. But for a, a period of years after his stroke, I watched he and my mother deal with trying to avoid institutionalization. For a while, he was in rehab at Fraser Rehab and then at uh, Oakline up in Louisville trying to do rehab. And when, when he reached his maximum recovery, we went home to, to Burksville. And immediately we had access to home health care, physical therapy, occupational therapy, those sorts of things. And the old adage that there's no place like home, really, uh, I learned more about that than I ever thought I could know. So I watched my dad, until the time of his death, struggle with the situation and try to reach out and get help. And I, I watched people come every day and talk about institutionalization and the other options. And I, I know from personal experience that in-home care and community-based care is the way to go. I'm, not, I'm convinced that it's more cost-effective. I'm convinced that it's more humane, and I think that we can make it work better than we do in Kentucky. And there are interests uh, that, that don't want that to happen. I, I realize that, but I believe as governor, 
uh, it will be my duty to stand up for the individuals who don't have a voice themselves and make sure they have an opportunity to have as many choices as possible. Again, we come back to that person having the right to live in their own home and receive the medical benefits they need. In addition to which, it, I believe, has been proven to be a savings. Instead of concentrate less on, the, on uh, nursing home care, I think uh, people are more satisfied at home and get better care there and would rather be in their own home as long as they can survive there with a little assistance and uh, it'd be a lot cheaper on the taxpayers. What is your plan to provide Kentucky residents more options to live independently at home and in the community? What specific steps would you take to ensure that Kentucky residents in need of long-term care have access to a full range of services outside of nursing homes? How would you propose financing this, including redirecting resources from nursing homes? What steps would you take to ensure that Kentucky residents have choices to remain in their homes and communities as they age? It is very important, I think, from a quality of life standpoint for our seniors to be able to spend as many of their years and hopefully all of their years uh, in their own homes and in their own communities. Uh, I think that that is, is where most folks want to be. That's where they enjoy the best quality of life. But in order for them to do that, they're going to have to have community-based services available so that they can stay in their homes and in their communities. Uh, they are available now. They're not as much available as I would like to see them. Uh, fortunately, our budgetary situation in the state as we start climbing out of this recession is improving. Uh, I foresee that there are going to be some additional funds over the next few years that we will be able to utilize in that area. And so we're going to be investing more in community-based services so that our folks can indeed enjoy that option and that choice of staying in their own homes and their own community. What's your plan to provide Kentucky residents more options to live independently at home and in the community? What specific steps would you take to ensure that Kentucky residents in need of long-term care have access to a full range of services outside of nursing homes? How would you propose financing this, including redirecting resources from nursing homes? What steps would you take to ensure that Kentucky residents have choices to remain in their homes and communities as they age? Well, I think that I would like to institute a model that brought together uh, all the care providers in, in every community. I did a similar model when we tried to do, deal with an agency that we called uh, Kentucky Agency for Substance Abuse Programs. And what we did in that particular situation is to bring all the providers and, and the stakeholders in the community together to make sure that everyone knew about the availability of various services and that we informed folks and had uh, education uh, to the community about what was provided. In order to do that in each community, you have different challenges in rural areas versus urban areas or suburban areas versus inner city areas, and you have to recognize that. Now, we all know that we do have limited funds in Medicaid, and with Obamacare coming online, the 815,000 uh, Kentuckians that are on Medicaid will probably balloon by 400,000, so we're going to have problems with the Medicaid budget in, in the future. Uh, right now, the managed care is, is not focused on care for the elderly, elderly or institutionalized folks, but in the future, I, I don't think that we're going to have to make choices between taking money away from nursing homes and doing in-home or community-based care. I think that we need to look at it as one large problem with everyone working together. And as the population uh, gets older and those that are baby boomers like myself start entering into the age where they're going to need some more assistance, those beds, I believe, will be used, quite frankly, for more critically Ill, Ill people than they are now. So we're going to have to have spaces and accommodation 
in home and community based to take care of folks that there won't be room for in the nursing homes. So I, I don't want to pit nursing homes against advocates like AARP. I think everyone basically wants the same sort of thing is to provide health care and to provide a quality life for everyone. And I, I hope to be an individual that understands that this is a community activity and that we, we instead of uh, focusing on reshifting funds that we need to focusing on uh, focus on giving the best care for everyone we can. Yeah, I think uh, it should be balanced out for the needs uh, of the seniors based on what that might be. Uh, but the, my priority would be more need for uh, uh, in-home care. Governor, will you work to fund essential human services as a top priority in the state budget? Do you support more funding for aging services in the 2012 budget? What new programs or policy changes would you recommend to help older residents? I think our record over the last four years has proven that human services and human needs are a top priority of the Bashir administration. You know, in spite of the worst budgetary crisis that any of us have ever lived through, uh, we've protected the Medicaid program. We protected mental health uh, programs in this state. We have found funds to uh, rebuild the Glasgow State Nursing Home. Uh, we uh, got funds to invest in Oakwood down in Somerset and was able to get the federal funding restored. So I think all of those are examples of just how valuable uh, we know and we think that human services are to our people. You know, going forward, uh, we've got a lot that we can still do. Just this last year, uh, I ordered a comprehensive review of elder abuse issues, and we're now uh, implementing many of those recommendations. Uh, we are expanding criminal background checks uh, in, for folks that work at nursing homes. Uh, I very much support an elder abuse registry, and we supported it last year. We didn't get it passed. I'm very hopeful that during this session of the General Assembly coming up that we will both pass it and fund it. So we're going to keep working very hard to make sure that we protect our seniors and that they can age gracefully and with dignity. Will you work to fund essential human services as a top priority in the state budget? Do you support more funding for aging services in the 2012 budget? What new programs or policy changes would you recommend to help older residents? You know, in the last several sessions of the General Assembly, and particularly in the Bashir administration, we appear to come to every session of the General Assembly with looking for more and more cuts and more ways to find one-time expenditures. And one of the reasons we have done that, in my opinion, and respectfully, is the governor has shown no leadership in trying to create more jobs in Kentucky. The problem we have is anytime you have an unemployment rate that is double digit and people that are underemployed that go up to 16 or 17 percent of the population and a lot of people who don't even show up because they've given up, you never have enough funds to provide essential services because you have a large number of people that are struggling and they're in poverty. That's the reason that we have so many people uh, in the Medicaid program now and when Medicaid recipients are, are no longer just categorically eligible, in other words when they're not just disabled or aged or other sort of categories, um, young children and m mothers that have just had children, when that expands just to people that are eligible just by virtue of their income, then that's going to take resources away from the disabled and the elderly in the future. So what we have to do is make sure we get more people back to work and that we have a larger pie uh, for everyone. Uh, we can be more efficient in a lot of the things we do, but I'll give you an example. The governor claims he can save $1.3 billion in managed care over the next two years. Now, I don't believe he can do that. Uh, but if he could do that, why hasn't he put those uh, procedures in place in, in the past? Uh, 13 to 16 percent of every Medicaid dollar in managed care is going to go to the management company, and yet not one of those companies is a, is a Kentucky-based company. So we have real issues facing Medicaid and elder care in Kentucky, and the 
and the most severe issue is that you and I are talking about lim limited assets and, and, and limited resources that we have when we have to have adequate resources. And we don't have adequate resources right now, and we won't have until we have a larger percentage of our population employed gainfully. And that's my primary responsibility as governor, is to make sure that those that want work can find work good jobs, well-paying jobs, and then we will have the money available to focus on helping those individuals who can't take care of themselves. Social workers are not important unless your family needs one. You know, someone coming in home care is not important. An occupational therapist isn't important until you become immobile. One of the worst things that can happen to an individual, and I witnessed this with my father, is get where they cannot be ambulatory. And that's the reason we need to have physical therapists that come in homes and other people like that. And if you neglect these needs, then you're going to actually incur more cost down the road. Uh, being ambulatory is the greatest single health detriment you have because then everything starts shutting down. So I want uh, the folks that watch this video to know that I have a heart for the people that are going through this. My family has gone through this. All of us are going to go through these sort of situations. Governor, please explain your approach to the state budget and taxes, specifically which types of expenditures and or revenues do you believe should be increased or decreased? Well, as I've mentioned, uh, Kentucky and indeed the entire United States has been going through the, the worst recession of our lifetimes over the last three years or so. And I have taken the same approach to the state budget as families at home sitting around the kitchen table have taken to their budgets. We've had to be more efficient. We've had to do more with less. You know, I have cut over a billion dollars in spending in the last three and a half years to keep our budget balanced. Uh, we have reduced the size of the executive branch workforce uh, to the smallest that it's been in 20 years. I also feel like uh, being governor means that you have to lead by example. And so when state workers uh, took furlough days, I took the same unpaid days. Uh, I have cut my own salary by 10%. Each month I write a check back to the state for 10% of my salary because I feel like that as governor I've got to step up and show that, that I understand the sacrifices people are making and I need to make those same sacrifices. Because of how we've done that, and at the same time, we've kept a priority on our human services area of our budget. We are poised to come out of this recession, I think, a lot faster and a lot better than most other states. At the same time, another thing we've done is we have not raised any broad-based taxes. I feel like during a recession like this, that would be the absolute worst thing to do. It would hinder us being able to get out of this recession. Our businesses, our families right now don't need any additional burdens, tax burdens on them as we climb out of this recession. Uh, unlike Illinois that raised their personal income tax rates 66 percent and their business tax rates 45 percent, uh, we didn't do that. We're not going to do that. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that we come out of this recession in good order before we start tinkering with our tax system. Please explain your approach to the state budget and taxes, specifically what types of expenditures and or revenues do you believe should be increased or reduced? Well, one of the uh, main uh, planks of my platform is to completely redesign Kentucky's tax structure to make Kentucky the best place in America to create and retain jobs. Uh, we have a tax structure that is so bad that Governor Bashir's first ad in his campaign is saying how he's given tax breaks or incentives to create jobs. Two billion dollars worth of tax breaks to allegedly create 25,000 jobs that they can't document. Now the only thing that is is an admission that our tax structure does not allow us to compete on the level playing field with other states. 
Now, the House of Representatives, with all due respect, in my opinion, does not have the political will at this juncture to make some of the changes in our tax code that need to be made. And that's the reason that I proposed in the last session of the General Assembly and will propose as governor the creation of a commission to write a new tax code from top to bottom to make sure that we're a low tax state, a fair tax state, to take into consideration that we don't want a regressive tax system, but we want one that will create jobs. And when you create those jobs, uh, I will give you an example. Many states go toward more consumption tax than productivity taxes. For you know, I, and, and recently, and I was the champion of uh, giving exemption as far as state income tax to our military uh, individuals, whether it be National Guard or military. When we changed that law, and it took us five times to do it, the governor wasn't for it, some of the people in the House weren't for it, but finally when we got it changed, down in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, where the 101st Airborne is located, every time I go down there, I have people say, I'm going to claim myself as a Kentuckian again. I'm going to move back to Christian County. Now, if you have that sort of effect by just doing away with the income tax, you can imagine when people come back, they buy property, they, they buy products, they do other things. Those sort of changes make sense. You can go right across the line in Tennessee and pay no personal income tax. So those sort of changes, we, we need to be smart about taxation. We need to get our population up. We need to have more people working. And then the people that can't take care of themselves can receive some help. And as far as expenditures are concerned, I'll tell you this. You know, we have to make sure that government runs more efficiently, we do away with more personal service contracts, and that we try to limit our expenditures to 6% of the domestic product of the state of Kentucky, and to make sure that we limit our debt service to 6% of our budget. Those are two goals that I'll try to carry out. Financing of long-term care, that, that has to be an issue in the, in the entire state of Kentucky. We all need to uh, start thinking about long-term care because either you're going to deal with it in one manner of speaking, you're going to deal with, like myself, with elderly relatives, or you're going to deal with, with yourself, you'll get there. So budgets have to, the uh, General Assembly must be addressed, and we've got to have money set aside uh, for that specific purpose, and that's not the case now. I think there is security and uncertainty that's attacking people today, and most especially seniors, because nobody's going to hire me at 74 years of age, and it's not logical to say we'll go out and get an extra job. We have to depend on somebody and uh, it's the government. Governor, how would you ensure that there's a strong consumer involvement in the design and operation of a health insurance exchange in our state? What steps would you take to make sure that the health insurance exchange selects consumer-friendly products? Well, first of all, we're not sure yet what the courts will say about the Federal Health Care Reform Act, but we are moving ahead in various ways to get prepared, assuming that the courts uphold that act. We have not made a decision yet over whether the state or the federal government uh, will run our exchange, but we are making some basic decisions to pull together all of the basic essential elements that would be necessary uh, to set that exchange up. It is very important to me that as f part of the decision making that we're going through that we get uh, a lot of consumer input, a lot of input from providers and other stakeholders in the healthcare business and, and in the healthcare service area. And we have a website, for instance, where people can, can uh, get on and give, give us their comments. We've solicited written comments. We're going to continue to look for ways to get more input from consumers and providers and other stakeholders as we move along and make those vital decisions that will help us set up those exchanges. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. How would you ensure that there is strong consumer involvement in the design and operation of a health insurance exchange in our state? What steps would you take to make sure that the health insurance exchange selects consumer-friendly products. Well, let me start my answer by telling you this. I'm absolutely against 
implementation of the Obama health care plan. I think it will be disastrous for Kentucky. It will be disastrous for America. It will kill jobs. It will force us to put 400,000 additional Kentuckians on the Medicaid rolls. And as far as the exchanges are concerned, the last time there was an attempt at the national level to mandate a single payor system, that was when he, what was affectionately known as Hillary Care. And remember, House Bill 250 was passed by the governor, the Democratic governor and the legislature. The House and Senate were both controlled by that party at the time. And it destroyed the health insurance market in Kentucky. And we've never really recovered. We don't know what an insurance policy designed by some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. is going to look like. But I will tell you, it will force more people in, into an uninsured status and then those people, in my opinion, will have to be a part of some uh, scheme by the federal government to allow people to pay some entry fee or marginal rates that, that go up for supplementation. A number of Kentuckians will be huge that will be supplemented to be paid. And those people that will be left are an unknown number. So I think that the main thing a governor needs to do is join the lawsuit to repeal Obamacare because the federal government, in my opinion, does not have the constitutional power of authority uh, or authority to, to impose these restrictions or obligations on individuals or the states. The states created the federal government. The federal government did not create the states. And we need to focus on taking care of our own people and rather than using all these additional resources and, and including the additional health care costs to our employees to focus on people who can't take care of themselves. That's what my focus will be, is to make sure we have the resources for the aged and the infirmed who do not have the resources to take care of themselves. Thank you, Senator. Williams. Thank you so very much. It's been a pleasure being with you yes. today. Thank you for watching. Also, we want to thank our candidates who appeared with us, who answered questions, Governor Steve Bashir and Senate President David Williams. Please remember to vote on Tuesday, November the 8th. In Kentucky, the polls are open in your local area from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Voting is extremely important. This is, as you've heard on this video, an extremely important election in terms of services and supports for older Kentuckians and for their families. For more information, go to our website, www aarp.org slash ky.